Welcome. I'm Lisa Marcolongo. I'm a member of the GI Film Festival of San Diego's Advisory Committee. On behalf of KPBS, our festival organizers, volunteers, and filmmakers, thank you for joining us for Sky Blossom, Diaries of the Next Greatest Generation. With us this evening is Richard Louis. I would also like to introduce Martha Rayon, the Executive Vice President of Southern Caregiver Resource Center. The Southern Caregiver Resource Center is the county's leading provider for free caregiver support services for families caring for frail older seniors and adults living with chronic and disabling conditions and diseases. Thank you both for being here this evening. Richard, let's um, have you start us off with, I know that this was um, a personal experience and we wanted to know why you wanted to uh, feature this particular topic. Um, what does it mean to you? And explain your own personal connection. That would be wonderful. Lisa, thanks so much and love the GI Film Festival and we, We've talked about this for probably the last four or five years, um, how we could um, make it this far. And uh, so we feel as the, there's a, about 150 people that were involved in our film um, and about half of the, the time and the effort was donated. Um, so we, we are glad that we are able to get this story out um, about young caregivers and military families. And, and the way it started for me um, was caring for my father. Um, both my father and my mother came from military families. They never talked about it. Uh, I only knew about that background um, after, well, after uh, their siblings passed away. That, you know, I, I had seven uncles that had served in the U.S. military, but they never talked about it. And I, I didn't know why. Um, and then when Elizabeth Dole came knocking on the door, and said, uh, hey, Richard, uh, let's, let's uh, talk about caregivers in military families. It re really had a, an amazing synchronicity. And the reason why we selected young caregivers in military families is because they're often not seen, um, yet so important in, in, a, in a caregiving context in military families. So it was my caring for my father who was diagnosed with Alzheimer's eight years ago and me wanting to care for him and then learning about um, his military background. And then uh, Senator Dole, who, um, as you know, she, you cannot say no to her. Yes, and for those that in our audience that are not familiar, um, there's the Elizabeth Dole Foundation. They have a Hidden Heroes a campaign. And so those are, our hidden heroes are those those family members, they can be a spouse or a child or a friend that's caring for a veteran that um, has been injured, ill, or has a disease processing that they need that assistance. And so those are what we call our hidden heroes. And thank you for bringing attention to that particular topic. Martha, um, why is this film so important? You know, I, when I was watching this film, I was so excited that uh, Richard was able to capture really the essence of the challenges that caregivers face. Oftentimes, like you're mentioning, those go unreported, they go unnoticed. And it's, it's not an easy thing to be a family caregiver. So when I was watching this film, I was very grateful that there is now a, a, a light that's being shown on the, the plight of the caregiver. And I really wanted to thank you, Richard, for, for doing that. Um, Richard, what's the message that you wanna share with our audience today and with others through this film? Uh, first of all, that um, it, this is about military families and we know that they give everything. We've always known that. Um, but we sometimes forget the journey uh, as they move forward uh, after return. And sometimes we forget the fact that uh, the children are just as heroic in many ways um, as our veteran. And um, I am so heartened by what they represent. In the film, you'll notice we portray all of the young caregivers um, 
ways where they're, uh, I guess, very humble about the amazing things they do. Um, and the reason why it's called Sky Blossom Diaries of the Next Greatest Generation is because I really do believe after spending three years uh, going across our great country to talk with them, that they represent something that is amazing for the future. And there's a lot of things that tell us, you know, we're worried about the future. I would say, look at, look at Darren, look at Camille, look mm -hmm. at Jenna and Rihanna and Kamali and Kaleo. And I think we feel very, I mean, for the military community, we understand that like uh, you see it every day, but for those outside of that community, um, my objective was to show that um, of the 5 million children that are caring for a parent with, with a disability. Richard, I think we may have lost you just for a moment, but we can come back. I yes, think I'm back. Am I back? You yeah. are. Thank you. All right. Is that, uh, I'm not sure where it cut me off, but they represent, I think, an amazing future for our country. That's why I'm so excited. Yes, I mean, um, they're taking on so many tasks. I mean, it's like their second life. They have, they're, they're trying to be students or work um, or take care of their own family. And then they're also caring for someone else. I mean, that's hard to, to find those, that time and the resources. And so Martha, there is a question from Jessica. Okay. Her question is, where can I find free online videos, classes that can help me with my caregiving situation? I am, am very happy to say that as part of the Southern Caregiver Research Center organization, uh, we're, even though we're based in San Diego County and all of our services are free, uh, being that it is a military town, we do focus on military families as well and provide that service that is needed. If you go to scrc.care, you will actually find a lot of uh, live stream classes, conferences, one minute tip videos, podcasts, um, it just all kinds of digital classes that are available to family caregivers all over. So I know that this is a, a nationwide um, uh, festival. And so anyone can access this free information online and happy to provide that information as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, what would, Richard, let's go to you for a moment. What's one piece of advice that you would offer a caregiver after you've experienced all these different interviews and relationships you built with those hidden hidden heroes? Hmm. I don't know if I could do one. <laughs> and since you brought me over to the buffet, I'll maybe I'll ask for one or two or maybe three. Please. I, I would say number one, um, uh, when you're looking at those who are younger and might be in a caregiving situation, look, look past the forehead, look into the brain and look into the heart because in, in Sky Blossom, um, all of them shared something that was really, really special. And for me, I told all of them um, that I would guard their story mm -hmm. throughout the entire process, that I would be there until whatever the end is. And so I sat there with their stories. I argued with editors. I argued with people to tell them this is, this is their story. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know it. And I'm, I promised them that I would be there. And, and so far I have been, and I will continue to do that. So I, I would say, listen to the stories, understand that it's, it's in a way a gift, in a way something that's being shared with us that is really... Um, not only very vulnerable, but special in that it can change the way we think about family. And uh, it, it, as you've watched the movie, you can tell that, you know, we're definitely expressing the journeys of military families, but we're also expressing the journey of just families. And in, in the military community, yes, it's a very strong part of um, who you are, but it's not the only thing of who you are and right. my objective in the film was to show yes these are all military families but at the very core they're families 
if yeah. I if I may add to that, what you just said, uh, Richard, you know, I um, I had someone who was watching the movie and uh, let me know that she she's a, a millennial and also a military uh, family caregiver, and she identified so much with your film, especially um, now as a as a millennial caregiver, but also growing up and some of the activities that she was involved with um, in doing for her, both her parents. And I, I started thinking about this, you know, I, I know that it is not a very easy thing to do to be a family caregiver, but your, your film also captured the positives that come out of this experience. Um, you know, there seems to be this um, way of becoming more empathetic and more um, yes. in tune to the caring that's needed. Um, I was really, uh, really heartened by that because um, this is the next generation and we want people to be more empathetic and be more supportive of each other. Um, and that was really amazing that that was coming across from each caregiver that you were highlighting. Yeah, Martha and Lisa, really quickly. I mean, the mm -hmm. objective was to show that it doesn't matter generation. It doesn't matter uh, location. It doesn't matter the color of your skin, it doesn't matter, uh, economic status, that in these families, they all were together. They all exhibited this idea and this value that I think, I mean, Jenna, who's in Howell, Michigan, at 21, becoming the head of the household, right? And she's still, I haven't heard a bad word out of her mouth. Mm. And I've talked to her for four, year, four years now. Uh, you know, she, she had a just to give you a little insight, since we stopped filming her a year and a half ago, is you know she was pregnant for a second time, um, and unfortunately she had a, a miscarriage. Her father, the the father of her first baby, Jeremiah, which you don't know the name of Jeremiah in the film, but the father of, of Jeremiah came back into the picture, and they are both working together to raise Jeremiah. Uh, she is no longer the primary caregiver. She's left the home. Now her younger sister is the primary caregiver. And I, I tell you these details because as we, we think about that evolution of um, various generations all coming together is that, you know, they're, they're on a long trip, but we all know this long trip. And our objective was to show, hey, look, in only three years, we covered a lot of stuff in their life, but there's so much ahead of them. And, and, and sorry to keep on beating that drum, but, and that's why we, I, we put the subtitle in of the next greatest generation, because we knew going forward that they would do amazing things. And, and Darren, for instance, in McMinnville, Tennessee, who is now in college and, you know, I get pictures of her and her, um, not her prom date, but, you know, her, her, her boyfriend at, uh, at the current situation. And I talked to her mother and her father. I'm like, what is she doing doing that? <laughs> she's still 15 <laughs> she, she's now finishing her first year of college and I'm like you know <laughs> and I always uh Jessica Allen I always text her back and I tell her uh, she's growing up too fast um but yeah we, we we try to show the fact that you know there's a long timeline here and I, I'm really really hopeful well I just wanted to say that also Deirdre um has watched the, the, the film and she just wanted to state that I wanted to say thank you so much for this amazing film. As a caregiver of special needs kiddos and a military wife, it really hit home. I appreciate you shining a light on these heroes. Um, Lorna also stated, thank you for making such an important and meaningful film. These stories are so important for civilians to hear. It speaks to the need for greater support, financial and otherwise for military families. What can our country do to support these families more? Do we need to do more or just provide more information? I'll go ahead and have Richard maybe tackle that one. And then I have another question for Martha following. You know, Lisa, I think um, we gotta stop putting people in silos. Um, and our military families are so many things, as I described earlier. And what's uh, amazing about the, the journeys that they're all on is that they, um, 
they're, they're so open um, to, to the different narratives that come out of what they're doing. So to, to answer the question specifically, I mean, what we can do is share more stories about their, their, their every day and to understand that they are not, they're, they're different, but they're very similar to us. Going back to why I chose the, the, the regions, like I wanted to make sure that I had representations of all regions of our great country. I also wanted to show that the faces representing all the, the major groups of our faces of, of our country, that at the end of the day, it wasn't to show that they were different. It was to show that they were all the same. same. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think sometimes we forget that when it even comes to the military community, we civilians like myself, we forget that. And once they welcomed me into the community and I went head first, I knew that I had to, it, the, the reason why we synced was because we all cared about people. We all cared about family. And that's the, that's the number one thing about military service is caring about the country, caring about the people of the country, caring about you know, those who come back. So I think that was the objective. That was, I, I, I hope what you, and I, I get the sense that, uh, what was her name again that, that made that comment? That was Lorna. That Lorna, thank you, because that's what we were trying to do. And I know that it's not gonna be perfect, but it's, it's a journey, right? We're, we're, we're gonna get there. Linda has a question for Martha. Um, as a millennial trying to manage my newborn and care for my mother with Parkinson's disease, how do I know where to get help? Or, and thank you for giving us a voice. Uh, and how does she know that she needs help? <laughs> and where does she is, get help? <laughs> that is such a great question because as all of us who I think at some point either have been caregivers, are caregivers, will yeah. need caregivers, um, it's often very much uh, difficult to identify as caregivers, myself included. When I was caring for my great aunt who had dementia, she was 93 when I started actively caring for her. And I didn't even realize it was a family caregiver, yet I was doing all the things that the uh, main characters in your movie, Richard, were doing. And if yes. you don't identify with that term, how are you gonna seek services for caregivers? And so I was really, uh, really glad that the Greer family, uh, Bobby Greer was talking about the, the need to, re to have respite, to seek services, to connect, to ask for help. And so to this question, Elisa, it, it's very important that once you have identified as a caregiver, seek those services. Again, we are online, especially right now, there's a lot that is available to you. If you live in California, we're actually a part of a statewide system of caregiver services that are free to all Californians. So if you go to caregivercalifornia.org, um, you can find all those uh, different resources, support groups, counseling, classes, um, there, we have some evidence-based and evidence-informed classes that are specifically focused on the family caregiver. And the whole idea, which, you know, as, as a former caregiver myself, to be able to be empowered to say, okay, he's going to ask me the same question over and over, but I know it's not him asking me the same question over and over. It's the dementia. And I understand that now. So I, I just need to take a breath and therefore approach the situation in a more calm way and maybe in a more sympathetic and compassionate matter. So all of those are services that are available to everyone. Thank you very much for outlining exactly what those services look like. Like you said, the support groups or individual counseling or community resources. So there are things that people can reach out for, for help. Absolutely. Richard, I have uh, one more question for you um, from the audience. What is the most difficult part of telling these families stories? Mm. I guess um, when it comes to telling these stories, the, the difficulty is I always wanna do more um, as a journalist. Um, and I also want, us to hear their stories and you know I want to hear them roar you know we, we've said that before in, in many different ways uh, and I'm unabashedly a huge um, fan of 
all of the families plus mm -hmm. what they represent writ large, right? Five million um, military caregivers. So the most difficult thing for me has certainly been that I, I can't reach everybody to let them know about what this is. And I, and I want them to understand because it's not only an important community of our country, but it represents a larger community of 53 million family caregivers in the country. And so I, I don't necessarily know the answers to it, but my objective is certainly to try to make it culturally um, every day. And uh, I just can't believe of 53 million people that are doing this, mm -hmm. that we don't talk about it. It's just, it's one of the weirdest, it's like a cheeseburger. Like can, can if I say cheeseburger to the two of you, you know what exactly what your favorite cheeseburger. You're gonna tell me, oh, you know, I like this cheese or I like, you know, I like onions, I like them grilled or I like them raw or, you know, you're gonna tell me all the, I like no onions, whatever the case may be. And family caregivers in America are just as common as cheeseburgers. So why aren't we talking about it? And um, as a journalist, one of the big things for me that has always been something that always brings me to pause and depending on, of course, the source or the statistic you look at is, you know, some of my earlier stories about the military community uh, were certainly about the, the conflict zones and the amazing things that our service members have done. And then it moved on to every night of, of, the, of, of the year, um, a third of those who are homeless um, served in our military. And uh, that always saddened me as a journalist. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I needed to tell the story and tell the story. So there's a lot of layers in there, Lisa, uh, to that question. And I'm, I'm just giving you a couple of the ones that bring me, bring me back um, into why I think, you know, the difficulties of telling the story. Because the difficulty is I don't, I'm not sure if people are listening. And I, I really, I, I'm trying to scream as loud as I can, basically. <laughs> and if I can add, Richard, you know, just the statement of you don't have to do caregiving alone. Mm -hmm. We are all here to help. And we're all going to be, many of us are going to be caregivers at some point in our life. And, yes. and we do need to draw attention to this important topic. Like Martha said, you don't need to do this alone. You're not alone. And I just want to thank you both for being here this evening to shed light on this important topic and continuing um, this effort going forward. And Richard, we hope that we see more of your work in the future. And Martha, thank you so much for what you do on a day-to-day -day basis with Pleasure our caregiver. We really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Well, there's plenty of films for everyone to catch throughout the next week through the festival. And we hope that you, many of you see as many films as possible. And you can find the full schedule at the GEI Film Festival SD.org. And I, we just want to say a big kudos and thank you to um, those that made this virtual festival possible. Um, that includes our fellow advisory committee members, the uh, film consortium, San Diego, our filmmakers like Richard, and our festival sponsors and partners that include the California Arts Council, uh, Skatinia, Skatinia Daniels Communications, National University, Task and Purpose, and the San Diego International Airport Arts Program. In the email reminder that you received before the screening, there was an attendee survey. If you could just take a moment to complete that, um, it just takes just a moment of your time. Your feedback will help make next year's uh, festival in 2022 even better. Hopefully we'll be able to do that in person. And I just wanna thank again, everyone for joining us this evening. Thank you and good night. <laughs>